Tell me, what is Parish Brewery? Tell me, tell me about the, the business. Uh, we're about 10 years old. We have 31 employees. Not a gigantic brewery, but uh, one of the biggest in the area. We don't make cheap beer. We like to think that we make some of the most innovative, high-end uh, beers that are made in the United States. You know, we, we have a bunch of peers, a bunch of other breweries that we're friends with that we're constantly challenging each other around the U.S. to, you know, one-up each other and make some of the most awesome, innovative products. You know, how much fruit can you cram into a beer? You know, how do you barrel age it? And what kind of rare whiskey barrels can you find? We're, we're whipping up just incredibly innovative, awesome batches of beer like like a sous chef at a fancy restaurant. Right, right. Kind of like a gumbo pot. You try to find the best ingredients from all over the world, put it together and make a Cajun, uh, make uh, a Cajun dish, pretty every, much. Every chef's got, they, they like to think they make the best gumbo. Right. Well, I, I do my homework now, and I, I heard one of y'all went to Pins, Pittsburgh? To, yeah, that, that's me. That was so, you? Okay, yep. tell so me a little I, bit about that story. I moved to Pittsburgh after college. I went to LSU. Back then, there was only a Vita selling beer in Louisiana. Right. That was it, the only local brewery in, in Louisiana. And when I moved to Pittsburgh, I realized, man, there's all these craft breweries, these small breweries making beer in a freaking church. Mm -hmm. I mean, there must have been on the shelves, you could find a hundred different, you know, regional or local beers in the area. And when I came home, I realized um, we were sitting in a restaurant one night and I'm looking at the menu and I said, the people here don't even know what Kinda they're missing. Boring, huh? This is it. We got, <laughs> we got Peroni, we got, you know, the macro beers, the Budweiser's right. and the Miller's and all that. And we got a Beta and that's it. If we were in Pittsburgh, there'd be 10 other beers that right. were locally made here. And I said, this, that's a good business idea. We need to start a brewery. Right. So how do you make beer? It's hops, right? And Louisiana is not known for hops. Where do you get all of that stuff from? Well, we, we call it our local ingredients are considered indigenous ingredients. Okay. Right. So, an indigenous ingredient in Louisiana might be strawberries, mm -hmm. uh, might be sugar cane. Our first big flagship beer, Cane Break, I mean, we sell it from Texas to Miami, Florida now, uh, but it was uh, a wheat beer brewed with sugar cane syrup. You know, if you went behind the building here, you'd see um, uh, in, in the whole area, it's full of sugar cane fields, and it was just sort of a no brainer to uh, try and make a beer using sugarcane in this area. Right. But it can get crazier than that. There are no boundaries. Right, right. That's one thing I liked about craft beer. Over the years, I've kind of grown a passion for this because if you drink like a regular, you know, the regular run and mug domestic beers, I feel like I'm drinking water. This has actually got flavor, got taste. Tell me how you come up with your flavors. It's evolved over time, that process. When we first started trying this, trying that, experiments, you know, scientific method, uh, it looked like a science class almost. Mm -hmm. The first beers we made were not great. The next beers we made were a lot better. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, we love what we do. We love the beers that we produce. We know what we're doing. Right. Uh, so there's less experimentation with new brews now. Now it's, you know, what do you want to make tomorrow? You want to throw uh, this weird, uh, fruit that we, this weird purple dragon fruit. You want to make, right. hell yeah, we know what to do with it. We know about the right amount to add. Uh, we know what kind of beer it needs to go in and what the profile of that beer needs to look like from the gravity, the acidity, bitterness of it, every, right. the ABV, uh, all of the different particulars. I mean, we have it dialed in. So we, at this point, it's a free for all. It's mm -hmm. what, what do you, how far do you want to push the envelope? Right. What do you want to do? You know? Well, as far as branding uh, your beers, I know you kind of put some of the, you know, South Louisiana flavor into it. Cane break, you just explained, but mm -hmm. you got Grand Isle, you got Holly Beach, you know. What inspirations do you draw to create a flavor? You know, I like yeah. Grand Isle. So a lot, a lot of inspirations today come from uh, cocktails. So something like Grand Isle and, uh, or Greetings from Holly Beach, those are tiki inspired beers. So tiki cocktail inspired beers. So let's make a beer with uh, coconut and pineapple. Uh, it sounds easy, but it's challenging to get, you know, real coconut in the beer. Yeah, as long as it gets you cascade, I think it's a good beer. And would you, wouldn't you say? There, that's motivation. That's the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> hey, for, the, for the people that don't know what cascade means, it means tore up down here in Louisiana. So the future is going to be bright for this company. But tell me a little bit about what's on the horizon. Well, we, we've, we have a couple of big brands that people love, not just here in Louisiana, but all over the country, like Ghost in the Machine. That's been a, you know, we were one of the first breweries in the South to make uh, hazy IPAs back in uh, 2014 when everybody was still uh, making clear IPAs. Right. It wasn't cool yet. We, right. we pushed into that realm pretty early because we thought they were awesome. They were juicy and uh, fruity and delicious and just better. And Ghost took off, Ghost the Machine took off. So uh, we need to grow to accommodate that beer. I mean, we could sell Ghost all over the world if I had a big enough brewery. Right. You know, we, we have a good business. There's no rush to grow too big. Right. We, right. We, we're focused on uh, quality first. 
Um, we're probably never gonna challenge Budweiser for the King of Beers oh. in, in volume, but but in we, Louisiana, you certainly are. We, King. we have the hearts and the minds <laughs> of the people in Louisiana, that's right. for sure, and the Gulf South too. I mean. Tell me the hours that people can come get them a nice, uh, cool glass of beer. So in, in Bruce Art, actually, we still have Blue Laws here where we close on Sunday. Oh, really? Yeah, it's old school, so you can't can't come in and drink a beer on Sunday. But we're open uh, Monday through Saturday here at the brewery, okay. and uh, you can come uh, anywhere from 11 a.m. until about 8 p.m. You can sample literally everything. I mean, I think we have about 20 beers on tap in here right now. A lot of things that aren't at the stores. Uh, and on Saturdays, we do tours. So uh, noon, one and two, people can come in and uh, take a tour of the brewery with one of our tour guides and uh, get a little bit more knowledge about the process in depth. Cheers, man. Cheers, dude. All right, y'all come on by. I wanna go take a tour because I want some freshness right out of the- Straight get, out the tank. Straight, yeah, let's do it, all right. I had a great time with Andrew today, a little bit more than I should have. So if ever you're in the area, stop by and get you some. In fact, I'm gonna get me some Dr. Juice. Hey, ma'am, Dr. Juice, two? Yeah. Just for me, all right. See y'all later. Mm -hmm.